but I'm just setting off again. It's been a bit of a frantic morning for one reason or another. I'll try and explain later, I think. I had some difficulty mooring up yesterday because there were insufficient bollards and not enough mooring rings. And seeing that there is a lot of potential space to moor, I found that quite surprising. I finished up nudged against the boat in front of me using my centre line on one bollard and my front rope sharing the bollard in front just very sort of casually as it were. It's odd that given all the space that is available they haven't made provision or better provision for, for mooring. There's a concrete edging to the canal with a deep wooden board attached to it and you can't get behind it <laughs> and I think it would be very difficult to use a mooring pin. But anyway, I managed to do it <laughs> with two fixings. I normally like to have three fixings when I moor up. I went to the Ashby Canal Association shop to buy a few bits and pieces and give them some support. And when I came back to my boat, the owners of the adjacent boat were there and we had a chat. And I explained that I'd like to run my engine now and again, not only to charge the batteries, but to keep the water hot. And he very kindly offered to charge my batteries for me from his supply. He had four solar panels on his roof and it was very sunny and he was getting in more power than he actually needed. So um, we uh, attached my boat electrically wise to his and he did some charging of my batteries. And he also did a few sort of tests on what was happening where and when and I didn't fully understand it I have to say but um, it was very helpful anyway. I've got a wet foot. As whilst I was checking my water, I half slipped into the canal. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Fortunately, it was only my foot. <laughs> the lady on the adjoining boat has very kindly offered to do the swing bridge and I can see she's opening it now, which is wonderful. That will make life so much easier than stopping, opening it, jumping back on, moving on, coming back, closing it. Swing bridges are very difficult to deal with for solo boaters. I'll go into that a little bit more later. Thanks very much, that's a great help. Enjoy your trip. Yes, and you. Cheers. Right. Thanks very much. Thank your husband for me, won't you? Hello. The boat behind is backing up, maybe into the turning circle, or maybe to more up, I'm not really clear. When people very kindly offer to do something for you and you're not quite ready, it makes you speed up and then you forget to do the little bit of prep work that you like to do. So I feel a little bit disorientated at the moment. I'm sure that will soon pass. It's already a scorching day and very hot. Yeah. It's coming onto a blind bridge. It won't be long before I go through Snarestone Tunnel again. It's just ahead of me now. There was nothing coming today. It was a 
boat behind me. So he'll be coming through very shortly. The other boat is just coming in the tunnel now. There is a rubbing board in this tunnel as well to rub against on the one side only. Not sure if the camera's picking that up or not. Here we come out into daylight again. Turn my headlamp off. That wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> I just stopped for a moment to put the chimney back up. I didn't really like the look of it lying on its side, particularly when it wasn't necessary to be like that. These older butts used to support the bridge that carried the Ashby and Nuneaton Joint Railway, which opened in 1873 over the canal. I said I would say something about the operation of swing bridges. These tend to be very difficult for a sole boater. The reason being that the swinging part is usually on the non towpath side, which means when you want to moor your boat up on the towpath side and walk across the bridge, once you've swung it, you can't get back again. <laughs> So it always helps when you have crew, because one of your crew members can jump off, deal with the bridge, you can motor on through, they can close the bridge and jump on board again. It's very straightforward. But when you're by yourself, it is very difficult. So you have to try and moor up on the non towpath side if possible. <laughs> And, and do the best you can or some people nudge up against the bridge and then swing it and bring the boat through with it but if the swing is towards the boat then that's not going to work so swing bridges can be quite a nuisance for a sole boater fortunately I've not really come upon many so there's not been any issues and there have been other people around when I have like this morning when I arrived yesterday, it was slightly different because I couldn't see anyone around and I was trying to moor up by the Canal Association shop and I had lots of flower pots all along the edge. The boat was forward just a short distance from the swing bridge. I actually jumped off and I realised the bridge was going to swing towards the boat so somehow I needed to manoeuvre the boat back so I could turn the swing bridge and then do the necessary but I wasn't sure how I was going to do that fortunately a gentleman appeared and did it for me otherwise I think I would have been stuck 
So having crews very beneficial at times. The other thing to mention is my sort of slip into the canal this morning. I was sitting astride the gunnel on the bow of the boat, checking the water level in the tank. And I think I must have imagined that my right foot was hovering over terra firma. And I must have lost my balance and I put my foot down hoping for some support and there was nothing there. Suddenly I was sort of slipping into the canal and my foot went under the water but I managed to hold on. <laughs> so I think that counts as my little incident about falling in the canal because that is copable with. I don't want anything more severe than that, <laughs> that's for certain. The following day I had this bruise on my inner thigh where I had gripped the side of the boat to stop me from falling. You never know what you're going to see on the canals, do you? <laughs> I think that was a girl's day out, or a hen do. I did ask, but I never got an answer. We passed so quickly. <laughs> This is Shaka Stone, we've just passed through. The station for the Battlefield line is dead ahead of me, but invisible as it's hidden behind the trees. It's a really beautiful day. There is a breeze, but it's a nice warm breeze, rather than a cold chilly one just seen the biggest wasp ever go into the cabin. It then partly came out and went back in again. I think it was a wasp but it was absolutely huge. The wasp came out of the cabin. I was going to try and get a picture of it but it kept moving around and trying to attack me and I've been trying to swipe at it. Eventually it left. Oh, it was big. I've never seen anything of that size before. I moored up for lunch and was lucky enough to hear a steam train coming and caught a brief glimpse of it. It's really hot in the sun. Very hot indeed. When I stopped just now for a quick bit of lunch, I added some more um, suntan cream to my legs. I'd already done my arms this morning.
I've just moored up so I can go and visit the Battlefield Steam Railway. I enjoyed my trip on the Battlefield line. It was 20 minutes each way, which was fine for what I wanted. Didn't want too long a trip today. I'm now underway again, it's just gone five o'clock, and I will be looking to moor up. Don't intend to travel too far before I do so.
just coming up to Sutton Wharf. There are visitor moorings here and I can see there are some boats moored up on those visitor moorings. I'm going to go a little way beyond the wharf and moor up along a straight section where I stopped the other day for lunch, funny enough. I think it might be quite a good spot to moor up. Just much the edge of the bridge apron there. That was unavoidable really with the boat coming through the bridge, which was unexpected. It suddenly appeared and I had to wait for it and um, the angles didn't quite align. So once it had come past me and I moved forward, I was just too close to the uh, edge. I'm not far now from where I'm going to moor up. It should just be round the bend, literally. <laughs> Or am I round the bend? I'm never really quite sure actually. <laughs> anyway, very shortly I hope to find somewhere to moor up for the day. These are private moorings on the left side. I'll be mooring up on the right side, which is the towpath side. Well, I'm now moored up for the evening. It's coming up towards 6.30. The sun is out, right in my face. <laughs> um, I've just done my stern gland greaser. I've repacked it. It's the third time lucky. I had problems the last two days, which I'll go into another time. I did do a vlog on repacking the stern gland greaser. There are various different ways of doing it. So far, I'm finding that the way I showed in the video that I produced is best for me. It may not suit other people. Other people might be able to do it their own way, but I'm finding the way that suits me is the way that I demonstrated. And that is to separate the barrel from the screw part and push it down over the grease and fill it. So I'll put a link to that below and anyone that's interested in that particular topic can have a look. <laughs> it's been a long day. I started at quarter past ten this morning. I did moor up to visit the Battlefield Steam Railway. I went to the end of the line at Shenton, one of their terminus stations, and joined the train there. It was a 20 minute ride each way. And with turnaround times, I suppose it took about an hour and a half altogether. That was really a very pleasant diversion from, from cruising, to be honest with you. I do have an interest in heritage railways, and this was a line that I'd never visited before, so I can tick that one off now. <laughs> anyway, it is getting sort of not late, but it is sort of um, late in one sense, in that I'm thirsty and could do with getting something to eat. And so I'm going to say bye for now 
and catch up with you later. Cheers, bye for now.